الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونسأله الخير في المعاش والمعاد والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رحمة الله للعالمين خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله We praise Allah and we offer to him our thanks and our gratitude and we ask him to grant us the best in this life and the best in the hereafter <clears throat> and we ask him to shower his peace on the last of his messengers his gift to humanity his mercy to the world Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we bear witness that there is no deity save Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of Allah <clears throat> my dear Muslims as we are seeing today we have nothing to draw any power from or to rely upon except our faith our faith that can restore our hope and help us to maintain our integrity and our ability to handle life especially when things are as ugly as we knew what happened yesterday in that school near to Moscow where innocent children are used as hostages and the whole situation has been handled so roughly by every side that children who are almost human angels who don't even yet have a religion because every child is born on the fitrah on Islam are being sacrificed in such a brutality when things are as bad as this we have nothing to fall back to except our faith and our faith will empower us through maintaining our hope because one of the main features of the faith of Islam the main features that teaches us how to handle life how to deal with life is hope so much so that there is no faith if there is no hope according to the dictates of the Quran لا ييأس من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون those who give up hope on the spirit of God or فمن يقنط من رحمة ربه إلا الضلون who give us hope on the mercy of God that can get things changed are going astray are being lost and actually walking out of the realm of Islam so hope is a cornerstone in Islam without it there is despair and for a Muslim despair is not an option it's only through this faith of ours that we can see that and we can see no matter how things can get ugly or can get dark or can get helpless but for us it is never hopeless 
for us, there is always that hope that will sustain us, maintain us, will make our struggle keep going, hoping and looking forward for a better future and for a better tomorrow. We have been taught that this had been ingrained in our personality, in our mind and in our psyche, coming from three sources that Islam made them clear to us. The first source is the book itself, is the word of Allah that will tell you how to maintain and why you should always have hope. The second source is the model and the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third source is experiences that we live and we see, <clears throat> but we are not always aware of, especially when we are depressed or saddened or not seeing things the way we want them to be. So we fail to see the half cup that's full or the silver lining of a cloud. We get so immersed in the cloud itself without being able to see that in our own experiences there are harbingers of hope and of success and of change that we should, not, should never lose sight of. The first source, which is the Qur'an, we can even, uh, uh, a simple easy reading, will come through verses that will see Allah talking to the Prophet what does this mean? We sustain you and the end result will be for righteousness. No matter how difficult is it in between, but the end of the day, at the end of the period, at the end of the issue, it will always gravitate that a taqwa righteousness ought to prevail, to prevail. So al-aqibatu taqwa is something that we should always put in mind and put in heart so that when we see things are so gloomy, we don't lose the hope and this is why Quran put it this way. Al-aqibah means after it is over, not during the issue. We know other verses told us that during calamity there is ease. But this verse in particular and some similar verses to it tells you that the end is on your behalf. What this is teaching me is to persevere, to keep looking forward for something good. Not to lose hope along the way. Not to lose myself to despair throughout the long, urgent and difficult struggle. Another verse is وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ don't, don't be weakened. Don't be saddened. You are the prevailing if you really believe. If you maintain the faith, you ought to prevail along the road, sometime down the road. But there is a difference between people who are moving dealing with all the ugly images and what's happening and the problems without having this in their psyche and in their heart and in their mind that Allah told me that the end will be good, we cannot handle it. We, we, we will be a, a group of millions of depressed people and the depressed people cannot perform, cannot change their own condition. This is why the ultimate complication of depression in medicine is suicide. Because people who are depressed reach a stage that they cannot handle life. So they suicide. As individuals, and we don't want this to happen to us as an ummah. We have always to believe that Quran told us, the end is good, keep going. The second source is 
the model of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I want to share with you two situations that are very illustrative. One situation was when the believers were tortured very badly. It is actually during a torture episode. When they complained to him that where is the support of God? We, we are suffering. And he says, who came before you so worse than that. But I swear by Allah that a day will come when the person can travel across Arabia in complete security and with no fear of anything but Allah. What Muhammad doing here is teaching them, teaching us a lesson. Muhammad alayhi salatu was not a, a, a future teller. He's not an astronomer or astrologist. But he's a man with vision. And because he's a man of vision, he can transcend the moment of weakness and the moment of calamity to look at the future. With a team like those, with perseverance like this, with a book like that, it ought to be victorious down the road somewhere and sometime. This is the lesson he was teaching. Another situation when they were besieged and hungry and destitute and boycotted by everybody, he tells one of his followers, Suraqa, أَعِدُكَ سِوَارَيْ Kisra. I promise you as a gift, the bracelets of Caesar, the greatest and the po most powerful man at that time. He was not just talking. He knew that if they persevere, they ought to change things. And those are the, the lessons that Muhammad in so many occasions gave to his followers and gave to his ummah. And if you notice, both what the Quran is saying and both what Muhammad is <coughs> teaching is rise above the moment and look forward. Don't be trapped in the current situation because you will not be able to see ahead. Try to, to transcend the difficult period and look ahead to something better that will come. And so those two sources, we will find plenty of, of empowerment and plenty of resources that will really set us on the right, uh, optimistic, cheerful, <coughs> joyful track of struggle for the cause of Allah. <coughs> Rather than keep whining and keep crying and keep moaning and groaning and upset that everything is against us. It's natural that we go through that. But what is not right is to consider this, the end of the world. If I fall in a hole, I better not believe that the walls of the hole are the whole world. There is a whole big world outside the hole. And my challenge and my glory as a believer is to be able to know that and to push my head a little bit outside the hole and see the bigger horizons and say, I'll be there one of these days. I'll work for it. Not in just a high of wishful thinking, but it comes with the consequences of doing things right, doing things intelligently, dedicating myself to Allah, being really on the side of righteousness so that the end of the day should belong to me. In addition to those two sources, there is the source of our experiences that we can see in our life. Things that we do or things that we see done that can really uh, be signs of change that can happen in the future. And we got to, to cherish this. And this is what I'm going to share with you after we ask Allah for forgiveness. <laughs>
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله عليه من ربه أفضل صلاة وأصدق تسليم Dear Muslims when Quran was rearing up the believers throughout history throughout ages he gives them things from their own human experiences that will convince them that change can happen. There are so many examples for the sake of the time. I'll take the example of, of the Muslims of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa وَاذْكُرُوا إِذْ أَنْتُمْ قَلِيلٌ مُسْتَضْعَفُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِذْ كُنْتُمْ قَلِيلٌ مُسْتَضْعَفُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تَخَافُونَ أَنْ يَتَخَطَّفَكُمُ النَّاسِ فآواكم وأيدكم بنصر. What is what Quran is doing here? Talking to the believers. Don't lose memory. Remember, you were so weak. You were afraid that people can kidnap you, can snatch you away. And you were very few. And you were kicked around, pushed around. And he gave you shelter. And gave you victory. A human experience that the audience went through, lived through. With every prophet or with good number of the prophets mentioned in the Quran, there was always a, rem a reminding of your own experience. Things that you lived through that will make you feel that there is a hope. And I am inviting myself and you to always look in things that we do successfully and this will give us hope because just depending on the book or on the theory is not enough. We have to see that we as human beings are doing something good. And I'm saying that because, <clears throat> and I have to be very honest with you, from what I go through these days, I seldom come out happy. If I turn on the TV at the end of the of the news, I'm unhappy. If I read the paper at the end, of, if I go to meetings, there is some sense of bothersome that's there. But I actually, in the beginning of this month, it happened that I lived about half a day with the youth group retreat of the Islamic Center of Southern California. And this one of the experiences that I walked out happy. Why? I saw young men and women who are not scholars, who are not even claiming the piety, who are not trying to look good, who are not trying to do something that will say, wow, they memorize the Quran and they are good, but they are trying really to help each other to see the manifestations of God. One of the sessions was to go to the mountains in the retreat, look at nature, and everybody, he or she, will say, how did I feel the hands of God in what I saw? They are doing that on their own. I wasn't there to tell them that. It was not out of a teaching of an imam. But those budding new people are trying to find themselves on their own and to find their faith. They are worshipping together, praying together, trying to understand the Qur'an and asking questions, trying to ask if the Prophet was in that position, what would, would he have done? And in that, building a kind of brotherhood and sisterhood that we adults need to learn. It's not that I was impressed by great amount of knowledge or great amount of... No, but with the genuine... Uh, innocent, spontaneous trial of young people to find their faith, to find their religion, and to find themselves, and to accept the directions and the guidance. And this made me full of hope because it means something very simple, that no matter what happens now, we have a better generation in the make. The torch that Olympic torch of Islam will not be dropped. And we will have a generation that does not need 
continuous spoon feeding. No, they are on their own trying to find the truth. Sometimes they goof. We goof too, probably more. Sometimes they miss points, but at least they ask. Sometimes they do mistakes, but at least they accept it to be corrected. Something that we are missing in our own elder circles. They are so keen to know each other better and to have good relations. So from this very simple experience, I came out full of hope. And I'm sure that in the life of every one of you, I am sure that you were invited to a dinner or <clears throat> went to a class or, or watched a team or visited a neighbor, that something good is happening there, but you are not aware of it. Something good for the future of Islam, we can see. The point I'm trying to make is to trigger the hope on you, in you. It is through the Quran, through the legacy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and through our own experience, things that are happening around us, that we are part of this happening, we see it happening, and we better look into it more carefully and more optimistically so that we see the goodness that will never fade away and it is the realization of what Muhammad والسلام, said al khayru baqin fi wa fi ummati ila yawm al qiyamah goodness is stained in me and in my ummah until the day of judgment because sometimes we have the tendency oh there is nothing good whatsoever no there are lots of good things but because we are upset we don't see them so let us drop this dark upset glass and see life the way it is seeking hope so that we can find it and it can energize us and set us on the right track i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right path to give us the clarity of vision the purity of heart and the courage to maintain ourselves on his course I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our brotherhood and sisterhood and to instill love towards each other and towards him in our hearts. I ask him to forgive our trespasses and shortcomings and mistakes and to guide us kindly to his way. Allahumma ghfir lana wa arhamna wa aafina wa aafu anna wa tawalana wa tub alayna inna ka anta rahman rahim wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen akhni salaam.